Welcome to the Spring Arts Celebration, produced by the Nantucket Arts Council and Nantucket Community Television. We would like to introduce you to artists working on the island who have engaged in their work in their homes, studios, and out of doors throughout this past year. Some you may already know, and some you may just be meeting for the very first time. Each artist seeks their own personal form of expression. Here is an opportunity to become familiar with who they are and what they do. We are grateful to them for their ability to breathe courage, energy, and hope into our days. We know that not every day was a good day for each of them throughout this past year, and yet they persevered. We recognize that our artists remained at work through this pandemic, even as we now just begin to emerge. Welcome to our video series, Emergence at Work in the Pandemic, featuring Nantucket artists. In this video, we feature local artists who provide creative perspectives on the pandemic and the many challenges we have all faced. I lived here for 30 years. I just turned 30 and I feel super lucky to be from this place. I love Nantucket because it has a great art scene, fun waves, and people from all over. It's really a cosmopolitan town and it has most of your needs to live a good life. Well, I like to tinker. I like details, maybe that sort of comes from my mom's side because she used to be the sewing center design. And I've been making these quarter boards and these musical instruments. I, when I was in Colorado, I worked at a music instrument company and that really opened my world to like thinking what's possible. So I started making some of my own. When you make something with your hands, it's, it's there, it's physical, it's another art form. I think it's awesome to pursue more than just one art form and see where it takes you. It's really nice to have a lot of time to just focus in on it and create with my friends. Luckily I was in a good spot, Colorado, so all my musician friends I had made when I went to college were there and that really became the circle. I had just come back from Costa Rica on a vacation and I got stuck in Colorado and I didn't know anything about the pandemic so it was just like boom. It really felt difficult to meet up because everyone was hesitant. Over the course of a couple months, we got it together and did about three songs. It was kind of a miracle. I mean, so many strings, people that didn't want to meet up, the case numbers with the news, it would just, it would just deter anyone from meeting up and doing this. I think it really gives me an outlet to get out there and play music for people to see people get a rise, the energy you get from other people. That is what it is. Well, we weren't able to play live shows so much but just the time we shared together in those four, five practices and seeing the familiar faces was all the sharing that we could really do at the time. I literally was just playing music and working out and waiting like for it to end so I could go home with, and be with my family and not like get infected of the unknown. You know, the pandemic's going on, but I'm not gonna let that stop me from creating art and doing my thing. practicing and perfecting the art, make extraordinary sacrifices along the way, and essentially devote one's entire life to one's profession. Um, if a sudden inability to do that arises, uh, either due to injury or coronavirus, the impact is devastating. It is a loss of identity and purpose, 
and it can be difficult to recover from that. So in terms of working during the pandemic, I am enormously grateful for the work that I was able to do. And like everyone else, I'm greatly looking forward to the work that I will be able to do once everything ends. As I alluded earlier, my work as an educator has continued unabated through the pandemic. I've been able to maintain my pedagogical work, uh, maintain those connections with students, nurturing their development, analyzing scores, building technique, studying historical context, preparing them for performances, and all of this has been invaluable both for me and for the students. So my career is comprised of performing and teaching, so performing concerts all across the country and teaching a wide range of students, all ages, all levels, and also the occasional master class or concert, um, competition, festival adjudication, and the like. Uh, when the pandemic hit, my entire 2020 concert season was cancelled. First, uh, singularly one by one, one event by one event, and then just fell swoop. So all of that work of arranging the concert season, preparing the programs, etc., just poof. And at first, I, I just, with each cancellation, I would just resume preparing for the next concert and the next concert and the next concert, but before long, they were all gone. So that was devastating. I was utterly aghast. And with piano being a generally safe indoor activity, most of my students, I have to say, practiced a ton, way more than they ordinarily would. There were no distractions, no competition, and they achieved great progress. So that was enormously gratifying. I've been coming to Nantucket since I was a child um, for the summers, and my grandfather, um, my grandparents had um, two houses here and my grandfather's um, cousins were um, my grandfather's cousin married uh, uh, Mary Coffin Dittmars on island so um, it's really interesting to like feel that history and um, it's been a, a kind of magical and beautiful place for my family for so many, many years. So um, I make different kinds of art, um, paintings, drawings, collage and mixed media, and also fiber art, um, like baskets, weavings, um, and different fiber art projects. And um, during the pandemic, I um, was challenged uh, emotionally as we all were but um, I was able to continue with that because it helps to express um, things emotionally as an outlet and um, being creative really helps with um, being in the moment and letting go of a lot of things that are um, are challenging in life and moving forward during the pandemic a lot of people kind of went inward and we were forced to not connect as much to other people which is so important for human beings um, so by tapping into something creative it really just allows you to um, feel that connection to um, a creative force that is um, making something that's never been there before I first came to Nantucket in 2012 and I needed to use uh, Google Maps to get from the ferry to my house because I didn't know how to get here and it was pitch black and dark and I had no furniture in my entire house and I that night sat in front of the fire, my fireplace, and just laughed and laughed at how lucky I was to be moving to this island. And it's been the best change I've ever made in my entire life. Well, I am a writer and I feel like now, maybe more important than any other time that I've been a writer, I feel like it's really important to be sharing my craft with the world. So during the pandemic, I felt like there was so many topics to touch on 
especially since my genre of choice is um, romance and dating. Um, it's a type of memoir and like autobiographical writing that I do. As a writer, there there's a saying that whatever you're thinking or feeling, someone somewhere is going to identify with that and think and feel the same thing. And so when I write something about what I'm feeling, whether it's pain or love or excitement, I know that it's going to identify with someone somewhere at some time. And I love how my writing puts it into this little time capsule that someone, I might not feel it tomorrow, but someone somewhere is going to find that writing and read that writing and feel as though they are able to connect with someone else and that they're not alone in what they're feeling. Um, and that is how my art makes me feel whole. I've been a scram shander for 51 years. I celebrated my 50th year of making scrimshaw and artwork during the pandemic in April 2020. Um, I'm very fortunate to have uh, my artwork, my scrimshaw work, which was a constant in a time when everything was open and everything was questioned. The one thing that I was able to do was get up in the morning, make my coffee, sit at my bench, and create. Listen to a podcast, something on history, something that inter interested me. And there was a sense of peace and of constancy during the pandemic that I got from my artwork. Again, I consider myself very fortunate to have had that constancy because all of us were watching, waiting, uh, listening to conflicting words and not knowing what exactly was on the up and up. And we still wonder about that sometime. But the one thing that I could depend on was my artwork. I am a multimedia artist. I create with whatever I have available, really. Um, which I think kind of goes back to my beginnings as a magician. Abracadabra means I create with my hands. So this is the first trick that I ever learned. It's called the ball in the vase trick. I still use it in my magic act today and I use it to teach because it's a brilliant trick the way that it works. Uh, it's a brilliant gimmick. And it's called the ball in the vase because we have a vase and a ball. And if I take this ball and I put it in my back pocket, like so, Take the top, put it on the vase. Let me get my magic wand out here. Say abracadabra. Bring the ball invisibly through the air and throw it back into the vase. That's a good trick. Now I can make it go back to the pocket if you want to. I just say abracadabra. And the ball goes back to the pocket. Now you're being very, you're being very polite here. Uh, usually the kids will insist that I show them inside the vase. Let me do it one more time. I take the ball, put it inside the pocket, take the magic wand, wave it over the pocket and the ball, bring the ball magically through the air and throw it back into the vase, just like that. And now the ball's back in the vase. And at this point, the kids are like, show me the vase, show me the So the ball goes back to the vase. One of my projects that I'm working on is called Wishes From. It was actually started 10, 12 years ago on Nantucket, maybe longer. And the idea was to go in and collect wishes from kids and adults uh, on used bed sheets that have been dyed different colors. I mean, think Tibetan prayer flags, but these are personal wishes. Um, 
it went over so well here on Nantucket that I knew back then that I wanted to produce it on a much larger scale. During the pandemic, it allowed me to revisit some of my older magic tricks, um, brush up on some that I had been trying to master for many years, and really study some of the history of magic, which the more I learn about it, the more I love. I mean, it's kind of like a personal relationship with somebody. You know you love them, but then every once in a while there's times where it kind of hits you just how important it's been or they've been in your life. Being a musician teacher during the pandemic um, has been interesting. Um, I've been very fortunate that my son Isaiah has been home. He took a gap year from school because we decided that um, him going to music school online was a waste of money. Um, so it's been great for me. We've done a lot of playing together at our home and uh, it's been a it's just been great. Teaching on Zoom has had its challenges. Uh, you know, sometimes I want to reach into the screen and, you know, touch the students' hands or, you know, point something out on the music. But in some ways, it's been good for the students because I have to say, okay, now count backwards from measure six and we're going to, you know, so they've had to uh, be more independent that way. And I think, that, like, a lot of that stuff has been good. As a performer and as a teacher, I enjoy making sound. I had this experience the other day when I was practicing. I have a concert next week and sometimes before a concert, you know, stuff goes on in your brain of like, oh, am I going to be ready? This piece, this part's really hard. Did I practice it enough? You know, how am I going to slow my brain down so that I can you know, have this prepared. And then I just picked the instrument up, I was tuning it, and then I was enjoying the sounds coming out of it. I was enjoying the, the, the vibrations, the resonance, the, the, I don't know, just the, the strings moving and, and the sound, pulling the sound out of it. I was enjoying that so much. And how that relates to my life is that it brings me right back to the present moment. And that's the greatest joy in performing, is being completely present and just allowing the music to flow out. In March of 2020, the Nantucket Arts Council recognized the need to provide grants to individual artists. We hoped that in some small way, these grants would demonstrate how much we value and treasure their work. NAC, established in 1976, supports and provides opportunities on our island of Nantucket for artists and cultural institutions to celebrate and collaborate in the arts. We produce festivals, concert series, and we award annual scholarships and grants to members of the Nantucket community.